everyone, it's Abby. I hope you've had a happy new year so far. I wanted to create another chemise for my 1890s ball gown project. I could technically use my Edwardian ball gown chemise if I wanted, but I created that one at the beginning of my historical costuming journey and it was made from a polyblend linen from Joann's and it's a bit on the thick side. I had some extra lightweight linen from Dharma Trading Company that I wanted to find some projects for. As I had previously used this linen for my 1890s drawers, I thought why not make a matching chemise? I wanted to use some cotton lace that I found in the clearance bin, and just have fun making pretty things. This is the last step before I start my 1890s ball gown, so it's pretty exciting. Let's get sewing! I lay out my linen and fold it in half lengthwise. I'm starting with the truly Victorian pattern that I used to make my Edwardian ball gown chemise, TVE 02. I measure my old chemise to figure out how small I can make the chest. The pattern has gathering and I want to remove that. I will be modifying this quite heavily. The pattern is just used to get the basics of the shape and length going. I basically want to make a simple A-line chemise with no gathering like this image I found on Pinterest. I fold the pattern where I want the chest measurement to be and I lay it on the fold. I check my other chemise and realize I want more width at the bottom, so I refold the pattern and lay it along the fold of the fabric again. I pin that in place and give myself maximum width at the bottom. I cut giving myself more width at the bottom and about 2 inches extra length. I'm nearing the shoulder area so I use the pattern as a guide and trim in from the edge tapering to the shoulder. I round the neckline using the pattern as a guide. I trimmed a bit off the edge of the bottom to round out the hem. I didn't want points at the sides of my chemise. Off camera, I cut a second piece exactly the same as the front. I'm just going to have the back and front neckline be the same. I pin and machine sew up the sides of the chemise. I trim one side of the seams. I fold under the raw edges and pin the felled seam in place. I hand whip stitch the felled seam using a single waxed cotton thread.
have a bunch of lace and ribbon I want to add to the chemise. I have some poly beading lace from a previous project that I pinned to the neckline. I finger press the neckline a quarter inch to the outside and pin the beading lace over the top. This will encase the raw edges without having to do a hem. I have a couple different narrow cotton lace pieces that I'll be adding to the armhole and insetting under the neckline. Using a running back stitch and cotton thread, I hand sew the beading lace to the neckline on the top. I inserted the ribbon, leaving ends at the top on each side, and hand stitched the bottom of the beading lace down. I pin the half inch cotton lace under the beading lace along the neckline. I'll be adding this to the back as well. I hand whip stitch the cotton lace to one side. I then come back and whip stitch it on the other side. In order to create the insert, I cut right down the middle of the linen on the back, being sure not to catch the cotton lace. I finger press the raw edges to the outside and pin in place. I hand whip stitch those seams down to create my insertion lace. I whip stitch the other side as well. I'll be attaching this other half inch cotton lace to the armhole edges. You can see I finger press the raw edges to the outside, like I did with the neckline. I pin the lace to hide the raw edges and I whip stitch the inside edge first. I flip to the inside and whip stitch the edge down, encasing the raw edges in the process. I have a bunch of similar thicker cotton lace that I want to use to finish the hem and add as insertion lace near the bottom. I start with finger pressing the raw edges of the hem to the outside. I pin the edge of the cotton lace to hide that raw edge. I pin the next piece of lace a little over an inch above that, and then a third one will be placed about the same length above that. I will also add the beading lace to the top of the final round of insertion lace. I hand whip stitch the hem lace in place starting at the top. Off camera, I flipped it and whip stitched the inside hem to the lace to enclose the raw edges. I had originally wanted to use the ribbons to tie the shoulders closed. I found this to be difficult, so I went back and attached my shoulders with a whip stitch. I also had turned under the raw edges. The ribbon tie at the top will just be ornamental. I place a pin at the center front. I want to put some insertion lace here to differentiate the front from the back. I placed a length of the half inch cotton lace at the center, folding under the raw edges and pinning in place. I hand whip stitch around the whole edge of the lace piece. I cut the linen on the inside and roll the raw edges under to the outside of the lace, and hand whip stitch the seams to finalize the insertion lace. I do the same with two smaller lengths on either side of the longer one. I whip stitch the second wide cotton lace to the bottom of my chemise. I whip stitch the other side of the lace. I trim about a quarter inch from the bottom edge on the inside. I roll under the raw edges and whip stitch the seam in place. I then trim off the center fabric to create another quarter inch section on the other side. I fold under the raw edges and whip stitch in place. 
I did the same thing to the third length of insertion lace. You can see this piece is slightly different from the other ones. I placed this piece at the back. The front looks the same as the rest. I pinned the beading lace to the top of this cotton insertion lace, having already threaded the pink ribbon through. I use a hand running stitch to attach the beading lace to my chemise. And there we go! A completed 1890s ball gown chemise. I love how the insertion lace just adds an extra element to the piece. Thank you for joining me today as I made an 1890s ball gown chemise. This will be a great lightweight option to wear under my 1890s ball gown, as well as be an alternate for my Edwardian chemise. I love being able to create pretty things even though they won't be seen. Also, the lightweight linen will help keep me cooler with all the layers. If you liked this video and want to see more sewing and costume videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing and happy new year!
Thank <laughs> you. 